Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Ruled Waves as Great Britain, episode number four, and this is part two of the fleet combat that we had uh, probably gotten most of the way through in the last episode. We'll see how much longer it carries on. Just to recap the events, we had our two destroyers who did bravely sacrifice themselves to uh, thwart some of the enemy fleet. I forgot, how is Disgrace doing? She is... It looks like she's just retreating from battle because... Well, I don't want to say it, but maybe it's her namesake. So we'll try to get her back into the action. I, it's going to be really hard to manage her, though. Um, get this guy. I accidentally clicked to move, thinking I had the disgrace highlighted, but I had swirling tides. So I, I tried to do a, little, a few orders to get these ships back into um, a fighting line. Oh, but to continue our recap. So we can say that... I mean, if we wanted to be really generous, we can say that they helped contribute to the, the um, situation which developed where we were able to sink one um, French battleship outright. This Solferino is heavily damaged, and I think there's a few other that are damaged. Now, we've also done our work against enemy destroyers. Um, I think we can see this ship, and this might be... I think this is one of the battleships. I can't remember which one this is, but... Anyway, um, by the way, one exactly one minute has been run off camera. When I loaded back into the game, I just hit spacebar to make sure that all the ships were loaded in. Sometimes when you first load in, things need to run for a minute to actually appear correctly. So in that minute, the Braveheart avoided torpedoes. And you'd have to say that that's not surprising considering how cut off the Braveheart has gotten herself. But she's living up to her name. <laughs> she's bravely throwing herself into the French lines. Now my first task is to reform our battleship line here, and um, in order to still kind of live by Vestigia Retorsum, what, what guy I can't remember our motto now. Um, I'm gonna have to pull it up. Uh, Vestigia Nulla Retorsum. Should have known the Nulla, meaning we do not. I mean, do not. So Vestigia Nulla Retorsum. Uh, this is a little bit of, like, uh, this is self-imposed, right? And people are like, hey, you know, don't take it too seriously. There's all these opportunities to, you know, disengage without being considered a retreat. And that's true, but I'm kind of okay with taking it to an extreme in the beginning of my tenure. Not only does it make sense from, like, a hardcore idealist young admiral coming up and being really stuck in his ways, uh, like, uh, really stubborn about not changing... Um, and then maybe seeing, oh, yeah, there's better ways of doing this as he gets older. But really, it, it doesn't matter as much in the beginning of the game anyway. So we'll just we'll push it to a bit of an extreme. If we start taking like un, really, really unnecessary losses, we'll consider changing it. But right now, I just want to reform the battle lines. And to do that, I need the mingle to let the thunderer come in, the valiant come in. The Swirling Tide has to form behind, I think, the, the Indomitable. Oh, God, the Indomitable is going the wrong way, though. And is... Hmm. It's out of range to be... Huh. Well, that's okay. If, with any luck, these destroyers are going to launch at the Horatio. Um, and hopefully they're running out of torpedoes. I, I hope to God they are. Looks like we're still hitting the Solferino, which is already on fire, which is good. Fire is going to be very helpful. We've seen already the first-hand effects of fire to our own ships. Just going to kind of try, try to take this slow to get back into the flow of the battle. Once things, like, smooth out, I feel like we'll be able to get this going, like, maybe at constant speed. Although, there have been some people complain or not complaining, but saying, like, this battle is actually moving too fast for them. <laughs> There's too many things going on. This is probably a fair complaint. As I'm getting, like, more and more used to this game, like, the, I can almost read the things happening on the side without even looking at them. <laughs> so, anyway. Let's get you down to 16. Swirling Tide, you're supposed to swing in. We'll probably just go in a loop. Actually, let's go head over to this ship. It, we're still able to see it. If we're still able to see it from this distance, it probably means it's on fire. And I also want to make sure we do sink the um, 
the Solferino that we had damaged over here. So let's just move that way. And I'm gonna kind of zigzag the Thunderer behind the Mingle, just to give the Whirling Tides and the Indomitable and all these other ships time to catch up. So you still aren't considered in range? That's... The Argonaut's not, not doing great, huh? All right, come on. Surely now you're in range. My goodness, so close. Actually, yeah, it is in range. I wonder why it's still... Yeah, I controlled, huh? All right, well, let's get the mingle to dip south. It, it'd always be better to go around the Horatio, though. So let's do that. The reason I say that is because if these destroyers launch torpedoes at the ratio, let them hit the Horatio, not us. Okay. Rayfire's still down here. I don't. I don't know why she's turning back in. I guess it might be because I still have my flag deployed and well she does have torpedoes available it's true seems like a reckless endeavor though <laughs> now you ah, I just can't I cannot get you to reattach alright the ratio is sunk that didn't take long now we have to be on the lookout for enemy torpedoes so let's take manual control of the Argonaut I know she's on fire but her duties as a light cruiser in the Royal Navy are not over yet. So I cannot control you, huh? All right, well, let's get the inherent resolve up. We need these guys to start screening for us in this short range fight. And you know what, I'll, I'll even take the Braveheart. We need to shift you east. Is this is the, we want this one. Okay, Argonaut is fire reduced and then spreads. I don't know how to reduce the fire. I, I mean, I don't know the mechanics which reduce the fire. So, hard to know if slowing us down is going to help or not. Right now, the Mingle is engaging the correct target. The Argonaut will lead the way, hopefully absorb any torpedoes or at least gun down any destroyers which come at us. So, let's just go ahead and try to take out this um, Sulfurino or whatever it was over here while we're trying to get the rest of our battle line organized. And at least at this point, all our ships are moving in the same direction in like, if not a perfect line, somewhat of a line. So Thunder, you're sticking your head out. And we all know the saying, the blade of grass, which sticks its head out is the first one to get cut down. All right, the Marengo class. This is the one I think which is pretty heavily damaged. So let's just go ahead and engage it. Um, Argonaut, it'd be great if you got up to the next one, believe it or not. Well, keep pushing in though because I I actually do want let's get the mingles, okay, that's fine. Now this is not good. Do not want the indomitable to do that. I mean the thunderer. So strange. I don't know how to get this indomitable back in under control. But these guys are definitely gonna be doing their duty by going after the destroyers. So that's good. That's a good place for them. Squad Max, Squad Max is perfect. Uh, that's also what I want the Argonaut to do, but she's having a bit bit of problems. <laughs> okay, this is good. All right, so let's just try to control the battlefield a little bit better now, because we're off to a good start, I think, here. If it wasn't for the damn Indomitable. All right, uh, Mingle took a hit, did not penetrate. It's good to see. Such a mess though, they are in torpedo range, so let's pull back a little bit more. Okay, this is good, us hitting their ships, their destroyers with our guns, our secondaries, that's exactly what they're for. And look at even the Adelaide, I didn't even have to tell her, that's that's nice to see, that this group, the Adelaide, the Baldrick, and the Thunder Chief, know without being needing to be told what to do, which is clear the enemy destroyers. So we'll pull back slightly, we have. Yeah, this is good. So we should be at a much reduced risk of being hit by torpedoes. And I think we'll still be able to catch up with these just these ships in the end. Uh, okay, let's go up to 17 and call that our battle speed now. I know we have a bit of overlap here. I don't know how to deal with this Indomitable because she won't go off AI control. I might just let her do her own thing, but if she ends up getting herself sunk then you know, that's what I get for letting her do her own thing, right? So <laughs> it would not be good. 
All right, so we probably have killed this art class. This is good. I mean, all these destroyers are, even if they're not huge in terms of victory points, they're one less destroyer I have to fight in upcoming engagements. All right, so Argonaut is still taking some fire, obviously, from this. Oh, wow, well, yeah. I mean, she's in between two battleships. Not a position anybody would, anybody would envy her for. I'm going to actually try to get her to cut across this Solferino. If things go well, she'll pinch the Solferino off towards us, which would be good. If things don't go well, at least she'll get on the correct side of it. And it looks like they didn't go well, but that's still fine. 17, Swirling Tides is catching up nicely. Let's get you down 17 then. I think the line is basically formed and, okay, I'll just have to micromanage the Indomitable. But I'm trying to do a little bit more micromanagement in this episode, uh, just to prevent silly deaths. Okay, so we are hitting the Sulfurino again. Uh-huh. This is a heavily damaged one as well. Can't say I like this position. Let's have the Braveheart dive back in. Oh god, what the heck? Well, that is a brave destroyer that just... I don't know how it actually squeezed through our two cruisers here, but... A destroyer squeezing through two, two, just two cruisers is not, not ideal for them, I think. <laughs> Did they even get hit, though? Oh, well, one hit, but this is not much. Yeah, we really should be targeting it. It's obviously an extreme threat now. All right, let's have the Argonaut go chase these. The Inherent Resolve stay on the south side, and the Mingle will pursue the Magenta. Seems to make sense to me. Okay, we are going to lose the Indomitable, aren't we? Oh, wow. So we hit the Sulfurino. Ah, uh, okay, this is the very damaged one. That was probably from the Braveheart. Yep. I think the Braveheart launched a torpedo and successfully hit the Sulfurino. That's good. That thing's almost surely going down. All we need to do, again, right now, is just make sure we're eliminating their capabilities to, just, to use torpedoes against us. Now, to that point, we have one who kind of slipped through the screens here. The Argonaut's chasing this one, which is good. And I don't know why, but I've lost... Like, why is the Adelaide doing this? Maybe I'll have to do this. Get them not to AI control. Because this this Caribbean is obviously... We should have taken care of it. It should not have gotten this close. But, all right, that's good. Six-inch guns on that. Two six-inch guns on that. That's going to be painful. Heavy damage. All right. So hopefully our secondary guns are going to be able to take care of the incoming destroyers. We've already eliminated quite a few, you can see. So, just hope it's good enough. And on we go. Okay, two more hits. I'm, I'm actually trying to focus on this because this is important. And I am looking forward to, greatly looking forward to the next battles after this, if we have more fleet battles with the French, where they won't have so many destroyers, because they do have a fair amount. A ridiculous amount. Okay, the Mingles made his turn. Thunder, make your turn. All right, let's get everyone to go 18 then. Nope, squad max is 17, so everyone will have to go 17. 17, 17. Well, Adelaide, you're exempt, obviously. Yeah, okay, so we have taken out this. It's dead in the water. Looks like we've taken out this one, also dead in the water. So we, yeah, we, we've done our job. We have done our job on these destroyers, and I think that this one is now dead in the water. Heavy damage. We'll send the Argonaut. Argonaut will eventually just become AI controlled, but I'm going to let that happen. Maybe I'll even task her to defend the Indomitable. So, turn you to support line ahead. Now, I'm we'll just go one more minute, and then I'll turn her to actually... Yeah, she'll run off into AI control eventually, and then she'll rejoin the Indomitable. So we have a screen for the Indomitable, no matter what kind of stupidity she gets herself into. <laughs> Alright, so onward. Now, this is about the time where I think it would be okay for us to start using continuous time. Now all we really want to do is chase down these ships. So, alright, this is an interesting question. If I get the Mingle to speed up by a little bit, I would like this line to form as is. So the Thunderer, I don't know who you're supposed to. Good, you're after Mingle. Swirling Tide, you're now after the Thunder. And the Indomitable, you are now after the Swirling Tide. 
No, you're doing your own thing anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, fine. And I would like the disgrace to get back into the picture, too. Alright, so now we have to do... Um, let's do some AI control of the of the light cruisers. They've done their job with the destroyers. Now I don't really care as much what they're doing. Uh, let's get Swirling Tide to go to AI control. They should follow the... No, 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 no. Thunderer. Will you listen? No. Thunderer. Huh. It's impossible. So maybe I can't turn them on AI control because then they'll go off and join the bloody Indomitable up there. Alright, well, fair enough. We'll just leave them on AI control then. Alright, mission at right now is just to chase down these... Whoops. Is that the... Yeah, that was the correct ship. Just chase down these ships anyway. Got a hit on the magenta, which is good. Chase him down. So we can get one more, that would be spectacular. Quite a different pacing, I think. This non-constant speed compared to the, well, you know, where I'm, I'm pausing every minute and adjusting orders. This is the, the really, the. Not, this isn't really an extreme, but these are definitely at least the two sides of the spectrum. You can run kind of very fast um, on continuous time. Or you can slow things down and adjust your orders every minute, which is, you know, what an admiral would be able to do. It's not false at all. Or fake. Magenta taking some hits, and the Mingo took a hit, but it did not penetrate. Unlikely that our hit penetrated, to be fair, because it was a 6-inch gun. Now, what? which one of these do we follow? I guess we just split the difference and we figure out which one we want to follow when the time comes that we have to make a choice. Yeah. Ah, so we've caught back up to some kind of sinking ship. It will be interesting to see what sinking ship that is. The Disgrace has almost caught up to us. Unfortunately, I don't know what these guys are doing. The Inherent Resolve has gone off on a pleasure cruise to the north, leaving us rather unprotected. All we have is the Adelaide. And the Braveheart. Well, that's probably going to be enough, but... Okay, we just detached. Why? I don't know. No, no, no. This is two different lines. You know, for a ship that's supposed to only be going 17, and for a ship that's going 19, I'm seeing, like, a huge difference in speed. The Thunderer is overtaking. It should be moving twice slower. That's okay, we'll form up into like a combat box. <laughs> Not a formation <laughs> often utilized by naval formations, but <laughs> since we have the ability. I think we're going to shift back over into a line. Okay, I have the Adelaide here. Let's. If I get you to go to AI control, it's likely we'll lose you, so I'm actually going to mm, have to keep manually moving you. So let's just do this. Let's have some separate two-on-ones. The Mingle will engage the Marengo. The Thunderer will engage the Magenta. Now the Argonaut's fire is spreading, so I don't know what to do about that. I, If I detach them, I think that they don't necessarily go home, but let's try to do it anyways. Like, Let's see if it... if it works. It's possible. Sometimes they go home, but you know they still sink themselves because they go home too quickly, or you know stuff like this. All right, so let's dive. let's change. Marengo and Magenta both are getting hits, but only by secondaries. Uh, yeah. See, it's annoying to actually try to micromanage four different fleets at the same time, but here we go. The Argonaut does not appear to have <laughs> heeded my detach command. Not a surprise, though. The Braveheart of everyone is doing the most damage. <laughs> Only six inch guns, but it could start a fire. Braveheart started the fire. It's always burning since the world's been turning. Hmm. A few more six-inch shots. Everyone's kind of getting in here. 
Near misses on the mingle. Hopefully we get some hits in a moment. Very nice to see our armor holding up. It's obviously because they're using their 6-inch guns or whatnot. Which is kind of surprising that... I mean, from this range, their 6-inch guns are actually not doing any damage. Which is... it's. I mean, it's cool to see. We're getting a real... We're getting real feedback on how effective our armor is. And I, I really like that. Okay, good. Let's get you to a squad max and catch up. Disgrace. Let's get you guys to swing back in. All right, now we're starting to see some real damage get on get put on the agenda, the magenta. We have an unidentified ship steaming in. That is probably where we want some kind of support ship. They peeled off. Okay, so it looks like this one is now on fire. We'll keep that going. And we're starting to land some hits on the Marengo as well. At least one 12-inch gun. She's also peeling away. Where do we send the Swirling Tide to support? Light, on fire, heavy damage. Well, we'll still split the middle. Actually, I guess if the disgrace goes west, the swirling tide will go east. And with the flagship, so it kind of makes sense. <laughs> All right, here we go again. Ah, they're going to actually dive behind our ships. So we'll curl up with them. These guys will go AI control very soon, so unfortunately we need to get in the hits when we can. There it is. That's okay. Did they get a few hits? I mean, we've done some damage there. Hopefully the fire continues to do damage. How is the Argonaut doing? She's still burning. Ah, uh -huh. so on fire one. Maybe that means that that has to get up to six or something before we lose her. Somebody was mentioning that if it burns like six times in a row, you can lose her. So maybe that's the mechanic involved there. They show how many times it's been, or how much, what level the fire is at. Okay, um, you guys are coming back. That's fine. Just come back. We'll get to that magenta hopefully another day, but we'll chase down the lone. This is like chasing down a fox. <laughs> it's an unfair fight, but that's okay. I, I did, I'm, I'm happy with this. Look at even the Indomitables coming back into it. Although the Disgrace needs some babysitting to come join us, it looks like. Yeah, this ship's on fire, heavy damage, probably going down now. We've done a really good job of corralling it, and now everyone's just taking their pot shots. Alright, very good. Uh, the Disgrace is the only one who doesn't seem to want to form up. She's going to go do her own thing. Okay, well, we landed uh, a lot of hits in this Marengo. I'd be surprised if she's going to keep going. She's probably seen the end of her days. Six feet under, Davy Jones locker, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And maybe uh, let's start getting people under AI control. And we'll start, what we'll do is um, we'll slow ourselves down a bit. And hopefully the line just forms up. Let's get everyone to AI control and see what people do. Surprised we haven't been. Oh, another unidentified ship. There's the magenta. Might as well go after her. So they're slowly catching up. And I saw some hits going down. Um, I don't know what the disgrace is doing though. Really don't. I'm just gonna guess that they might the friendships might be over here trying to look for lost ships. Ah, okay. Here they are. That looks like a destroyer. It is. Well, two hits on it. If it's trying to um launch torpedoes, it probably already did, but I think it's going to find it's running into the Argonaut. Argonaut, hold your ground. My god, man. You are a light cruiser fighting a destroyer. Okay, the biscuit has lost contact. I don't even know where the biscuit is. <laughs> it's just the biscuit. Yeah. Well, good luck to you, gentlemen. I don't, <laughs> I don't have any idea what you're doing up there. Uh, 
Oh, okay, so that unidentified ship we see down there is the the Marengo that we set on fire. Seems like these ships are very hard to control. This is a, a nighttime debacle. This is what always happens. These ships are very difficult to control. We actually have the Viper. Wait, unidentified. Oh, yeah, okay, so this is just the fi ship on fire. We're able to see in the night. Really cool mechanic they allow that uh, the ships which are on fire you can see from a much greater distance. I think that we don't have to call this a retreat at this point. I think we can safely just move back to home port saying that the enemy has left the field. So if they've left the field before us, there's no disgrace in us moving back home. This uh, battle line over here is very peculiar. Why they aren't following the flag. Okay, well, here we go. Let's just sail back to port. They're probably doing the same, and this is a very successful battle. Very successful battle. And our fleet will roll into port, all minus the Indomitable, which, whatever. All right, so the end result, oh my goodness. Whoa, much better than we thought. And this is the really cool mechanic with the nighttime engagement is that sometimes you don't see what you've done. But we ended up sinking four French battleships. If things were in question beforehand, I think that they certainly are not now. For two reasons. One, this is going to be just a massive victory point um, bonus to us. And on top of that, too, the French have probably lost their capability to blockade us indefinitely. Now, they are left with a, still another 10 destroyers. We sink 9. So one battleship and two destroyers, they lost essentially four times as many in each category. Um, yeah, their armor cruisers ended up escaping, but they weren't effective in the, arm, uh, in the engagement anyway, so that doesn't matter. I think this was a really great fight. Like a huge victory. So we ended up losing our Horatio. The, which was the namesake, obviously, the initial Hornblower class ship. But the rest of the Hornblowers did very well. Oh, the Richelieu is actually... What? Oh, they have 13-inch guns on this. It's only 15,000 tons. I guess there is some kind of... Because this one uh, has a higher point value than even my Hornblower class. Yeah, but negative... You'd never want <laughs> negative two. Ugh. I shudder. Um, other than that, yeah, this is like reasonable armor. So, we have a few ships I'm sure that will need repairs after this, but uh, as long as it's not all seven of these, we should be in much better shape. So, how many were brought into the fight? It looks like it was almost a fair engagement. Nine to ten. Yeah, that was a really fair engagement. So it was about even, especially if you consider they had four armored cruisers to our one. We definitely had a lot more light cruisers with them, and I think that that kind of shows in the destroyer destruction. And I don't even remember the two auxiliary ships. Did we kill two auxiliary ships? I don't remember it. <laughs> if it happened in the previous episode, that's probably why. But anyway, let's go ahead and exit this. Yeah, 8,400 to 3,000 puts us safely ahead. This will be the uh, battleship engagement. So I don't know how many of those we'll end up having, which is why I named it as a historic battle. But pretty soon we're going to have dreadnoughts coming along. So, And when that happens, obviously the battle fleet engagements won't be as many. Now Blackadder wants to go on active fleet. I'll leave the Hampshire in raiding. We don't need to raid anymore. We're now ahead. So, and I think that not only are we ahead, but we probably can push enough forces. Like how many How many ships do the French have left? Wow, they only have 5 battleships in service total. 5 are building that means probably, let's see, they had 8. No, they had 9 in the last engagement and we had 10. We sank four. That means they're down to six out of the... No, sorry. Yeah, six out of the ones... No, five out of the ones they sent. And maybe a few of those are quote-unquote building, but are actually in repairs. 
I think that building and then repairs are the same. Let's find out. No, in fact, not. Huh, wow, that means they only have five battleships left on the map. Well, it looks like they don't even have any... They don't have any in the Mediterranean. We have more battleships than them. We should be blockading them. In fact, I think we are. I mean, it looks like... Look at this. Two battleships, six light cruisers, compared to two light cruisers and one destroyer. 34 points to six. We should be blockading them there. I want to make sure that happens. We'll probably... Let's see, who's in the Mediterranean? Stop raiding. Stop your raiding. Just become active fleet because we want all the points we can now. Um, all right, there was one request I want to honor for a, for a supporter. We'll get one more ship in. Exeter, of course, a great name. Well, I mean, we think of this, of course, as the World War II heavy cruiser, but we'll get in the Exeter armored cruiser. We have plenty of budget anyways. I'm just going to let this rise, though, because as soon as we get our first Dreadnought, that's really what I, where I want to sink a lot of money in. So, uh, all right, where are we going here? So we have enough people now on the Coastal Patrol thing, which is saving us a lot with all these other ships. But I do want enough ships to go into the Mediterranean so we can blockade them there. Let's actually get one, two, three, four. Let's get the tuba to move to the Mediterranean so we can start blockading them. Okay, next turn. All right, the Minnesota. Very, very low armor, surprising. Okay, they're sinking in Northern Europe and the Caribbean. Convoy attack. We have huge superiority here, so let's accept. Very good. All right, so just two of our um, light cruisers. If we come up against an armor cruiser, which I think they do have in the area, we're in real trouble. But if it's just a convoy attack, if we can just get in and sink the ships and get out, we should be okay. <laughs> Alright, squad max. Um, we'll come in from the east side just to approach with the wind. If it's just this fax, that's actually a good thing for us. I think we can two on one that. Pursue. All right, yeah, let's get ourselves lined up and take this out. We'll get the merchant ships afterwards. Oh, wow, the Queen Victoria took some real damage from this fax. And Liquid Dane now taking a lot of hits. My God, did we just get 2 v one Yikes. Um, I thought our ships were good, but maybe not... All right, well, stay, just go ahead and rest here, whatever, recover yourselves. Like, how much damage has, da we don't have that much damage, it's just, like, fatal hits, let's see. Electric power was down on Liquid Dane, yeah, that's always a bad thing. What about the Queen Victoria, what's your excuse? Uh, you had a critical hit, which disabled the machinery. That's going to really cripple our speed, though. We'll probably have to detach the Queen Victoria. I'm surprised. So I know we've done some damage to this ship, right? We can see that it's destroyed a turret, disabled two more. All right, the Dane looks like I can go 11. So let's get them up to 11. Split them off. Note where the ships are going. We can always come back. Do some more damage to them. Alright, Dane is slowly get, regaining engine functionality. We did get one more hit. That was one more hit, right? Yeah, good. Let's go ahead and do our worst here. Sink all these ships. Pull north. Yeah. 
just gonna this is like doing a slalom course they're easy targets better if we don't leave any alive <laughs> surprisingly we did nope we didn't okay good It's so strange that I we are not being very effective here. We are getting hit by the destroyers. <laughs> it's supposed to go the other way around. <laughs> I mean, just the armor advantage should eventually be enough for us. to the stern. Looks like that we got one. Good. And if we can take down this one as well, that would be really good. I think we can. I don't know what happened in the Sfax house. She might have gone back to port. Oh, no. There she is. Oh, well, that is going to be a dead ship. Maybe not. Yeah, we have time. We might be able to save this one. <laughs> Pause. And yeah, we're down to 34. We could save her. She's limiting flooding. Oh my gosh, we did. We saved her. Wow, fantastic. I don't. So we're gonna very slowly mosey our way out of here. Where's the nearest port of call for us? My goodness. <laughs> With a, a very damaged ship, we have to snake our way all the way down to Gibraltar or, I mean, uh, Malta. Malta or Gibraltar. Well, uh, neither are close. We'll just start heading south. <laughs> I think we've killed all the merchant ships. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'll leave this one <laughs> for the sake of saving our ship. All right, so we need to get some repairs. Okay, I do want to detach. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. But, yes. I want the liquid dane to get... Stop. Good. This is what I wanted. What's your max speed? All right. I want you to go pursue this fax over here. Okay. Well, it didn't work. But that's okay. So we'll say yes to all. It's not going to work. There's no... I guess this fax has retreated from the... Ah, speak too soon. So if we can have the... This is going to be a little bit weird. We're going to have the Dane... Hover outside now. Nah, they're just going to dive away. They're just scouting us, so if they're not going to engage, then whatever. Okay, there it is. What? How do they figure? The Liquid Dane wasn't sinking. I think they let the battlefield play out for, like, two hours or so to simulate you going back or like maybe it's three or four hours after the last minute to allow for ships heading back which are sinking to sink but we I'm surprised huh well okay so that ended up being a flop <laughs> we ended up losing that one and I, I can see actually that we're about out of time for this video so um, a big win, and then a, a kind of a minor loss to offset that, but it's not so bad. And we should be, and we now are blockading the French. So I think we'll see things shift very heavily in our favor from here on. Um, yeah, especially because we'll have our full complement in Northern Europe. They don't have very good options available to them. They can either continue to try to contest Northern Europe, which appears to be what they'll do, 
or they can try to retake um, the Mediterranean and stop being blockaded, but it's going to take a significant investment from them to do that. So until the next episode, thanks for watching, and take care.